I am struggling to wake up today, so I apologise if my voice is a bit scratchy, if I'm extra quiet, I'm just very sleepy. <laughs> it was a big day yesterday, had to feed eight, nine people, um, which was a lot of fun. I'm very tired now. Um, but it'll be appropriate because before I get into the wrap up, uh, I wanted to just give a bit of an update about why there's not been any videos um, and to just explain a couple of things. <clears throat> so, so sadly last month uh, I had a family loss. Um, this was someone uh, I was very close to. Um, so I've been, this was someone who helped me out a lot when I lost my dad a few years ago. So I've been wanting to pay that forward and help my cousins as much as possible. Um, so I had to take time off for myself, um, but I, there's also been a lot of driving around back or two to help them out with various things. Um, so yes, yeah, so that happened, which meant that the, my NaNoWriMo project was put on hold, put to one side, uh, so I've not written anything for like five weeks now, I think. So I want to get back to that. Um, I don't know if I'll just like carry on as if I'm in NaNoWriMo uh, and try and finish the challenge for myself. Um, and it also meant that I put my Mistborn vlog on hold. Um, I've maybe read <laughs> two chapters since my last recorded update for that. Um, because I, because I know how much I love Stormlight and I am assuming I'm going to really enjoy Mistborn as well. So I didn't, I didn't really want to associate it with this time. So, so this month's reading has been quite odd um, in that I was trying to find a random mix of books that I might not care about as much or might be more appropriate for the... I don't know. <laughs> so it's a weird mix of books this month. I mean, they were all books that are sort of... I have borrowed or I own anyway. So they're all books I was planning to read. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's a day when the news hit me especially hard and I just surrounded myself with three of these books <laughs> and just hopped between them depending on what I needed. Um, so yeah, so that's the explanation so you'll understand why this month of reading is so bizarre. <laughs> uh, and it also it's a little bit of an explanation because naturally in the vlog that I still want to carry on with there will be a time jump <laughs> and I don't really want to go too much into the news in that video so I thought I will put it at the beginning of this and I can point to the start of this video if it comes up again. Um, so now that I've told you sad news Let's get into some books. So the first book, uh, it was a physical book, but I have now given it back to the person who lent it to me. Uh, and that is The Children Who Lived in a Barn. I can't remember who wrote it. I will add to the title here. <laughs> so when I, I don't know if I've told this in any videos before, um, but when I last saw uh, Jack's parents, uh, we talked about uh, Persephone books that I discovered in Bath last year, Bath. And they're a shop slash publisher, so they republish older books. Um, I've definitely talked about them here before, um, but I was telling Jack's mum about it and apparently her and a family friend did a little bit of digging and uh, they found a reprint of a book that one of them 
had read years ago but not been able to finish. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. She bought this book and was finally able to finish this book from decades ago. Um, and so she passed it on to Jack's mum and then Jack's mum has lent it on to me to give it a try. This is a children's book. When was it written? Is it in... I'm not... It might be another, like, 1930s book? Another pre-war book? Or maybe just after the war? Um, <laughs> but when she lent it to me, she said uh, two key things. She said, one, the introduction by Jackie Wilson gives away the end of the book. Nice going there. <laughs> uh, so she's like, don't read it. And two, she's like, oh, hasn't it aged quite a lot? Now, <laughs> I was like, aged in what way? Do, is Am I going to find some secret racism in here? Um, no, there was none of that. Um, I think it was just like uh, old fashioned words, but also, oh, people wouldn't behave this way. But so basically the plot of the book is that um, there are five children in a family and then the mum and dad have to rush off uh, to go help the sick grandmother uh, and they're like oh you, you're old enough you can look after yourselves for like a couple of days we'll be back soon um, so they give them some instructions they're like oh stick together just look after each other we'll be back and then the parents don't come back and so this is the story of what the kids do um, they end up living in a barn uh, that someone kind of lets them use and it's all about how they keep themselves fed and how they look after each other during this time. Um, obviously it's you already have to suspend disbelief because even at that time there's no way that this would continue to happen. Um, I mean even in the book there's like references to um, whatever agency is going to come and take them away. Um, I think they, they're just scared that they'll be split up because there's so many of them and they were told to stick together. So obviously in real life they would just be put in homes until they figured out what happened to the parents. Um, so I was like, <laughs> so I was like, it's fine. I, I, it's, you don't have to warn me that it's old fashioned. I can see when it was published. Um, so that was interesting. Um, like I said, it's, I picked it out for the month because I knew it's not exactly, it wasn't going to be something I loved. I, I don't tend to go back and read children's books. Um, like I don't even really like YA that much. <laughs> um, so I was like, it's, I'm not going to ruin it by reading it now. Uh, and um, also it has the benefit of being something that's easy to read which was really helpful this month when my mind was a mess. Uh, so it's not an amazing book, but it was the book that I needed that month. Um, anything else to talk about? If you kind of like, I don't know, Edith Blyton and kind of whimsical British stories about children banding together, um, and it was quite funny to see the step-by-step -step of the things that they learnt along the way. Um, you know, they set rules for each other to not beg or steal from anyone. Uh, and if anyone gifted to them anything, they would have to share it with everyone. Um, because at, early on, like, the younger kids run riot and start being gifted, like, fruit that they just eat there and then. <laughs> and then the older kids like, no, you have to share it with everyone. We need to feed each other. Um, so there's some some fun parts to it. Moving on to another book that was again intended to be a throwaway, quick-ish read, um, but the benefit of this was it's a book that's been sat on my shelves for I don't know probably like fifteen years at this point. Um, I've had it a very long time. Uh, it has survived my last big unhauling um, because I thought it sounded intriguing enough to hold on to it and I said I will get around to it. So this is the big T old school TBR shelf um, and this is The Drowning City by Amanda Downham.
This is a fantasy with a sort of like um, Indian, Asian inspired setting, um, which is really cool to see because there's so many fantasies coming out now uh, where that is uh, the big draw. Um, and it's almost seen as something unique and amazing and special, um, which it is sometimes. Um, but this book has obviously been sat on my shelves for a while, so it's not part of that recent sort of pattern. Um, sadly, that was probably the best thing about it. <laughs> um, so we follow a necromancer and her small sort of like group of, I think she's a, yeah, she's a spy. And they come to this city and they I can't even remember what they came to do. I think they've, but let's read the back. Uh, okay, so for Isilt Iskaldor, necromancer and spy, the brewing revolution is a chance to prove herself to her crown. All she has to do is find and finance the revolutionaries. So this is a place that's run by um, an empire, but there's a outside uh, royalty, there's, ki there's a king that has sent her to help dismantle it. But it's all quite messy and not fully explained. Like I, I kept feeling like there was a sense of political intrigue happening uh, and different factions, but I feel like I think it needed more time to establish stuff because I I was never quite sure if she was still continuing the job she was supposed to be doing or if she changed her mind and ended up doing something else uh, and it was kind of easy to get people mixed up. Oh god and the characters so I feel like the characters are just not given anywhere near enough time to be established or explained. Um, so a great example of this, um, so minor spoiler, someone's killed midway through the book um, and then one of the main characters goes back to the scene of the crime and the murderer is there and there's a moment of, oh, it's you, you did it. <laughs> My reaction, who? who, who is this person? Have, have we met? Do, am I supposed to know <laughs> this like even one of the main-ish characters I kind of got mixed up um, that was probably my fault because of my state of mind and I was probably like glancing over important information so a character I thought who was a man but I was actually a woman and I had to flick back and double check um so there's another woman who joins them as part of their little spy group but almost immediately she defects to join a group of people in the jungle because they're like her family-ish. And I'm like, did, did no one think that was going to happen? Did she not know this was going to happen? Am I supposed to be surprised about this? Am I supposed to be upset about this? It's very weird. <laughs> like, there's sort of tropes and setups. Um, and so I can see the hint of how I'm supposed to react to these things. And I just didn't really care because I didn't know the characters that well. And um, so how many pages? It's like 350 pages. Um, and I actually think it probably could have done with some extra time to just establish a few things. <laughs> Because the events that happen, again, I kind of got the sense they're quite... The plot is sort of interesting enough. But a plot's only interesting if you really fully understand what's happening. You know, you fully understand the politics and why things are dramatic. And if you really care about the characters and know who everyone is, which half the time I didn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I found myself like like scoring it in my head as I was reading it uh, and it went from a three to a two and a half. <sighs> Is it a two? I feel bad because it like it ticks a bunch of boxes 
for me. You know, we get a lot of a number of female protagonists, um, which is great because it means you don't get the the one, you know, the one woman holding up the uh, the like I'm a strong female character banner. You know, we get some variety. Um, uh, <laughs> and the setting, like I said, the setting's really cool. Um, the magics fairly interesting um so like she's a necromancer uh, the only one really we see that being used when she sort of like exercises a spirit from someone um and then someone she ends up walking around with who works for the city keeps saying oh we actually should we need necromancers but people are a bit superstitious around them um so there's great concepts <laughs> however something happens at the very end <laughs> I won't explain, but seem seem to come out of nowhere. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, so a bit of a weird one. I I sadly can't recommend it, and I wish I could. Um, I did I did look at some reviews for this um, on Story Graph, and someone said that they were going to read the next one, um, and I I'd be interested to hear from someone who read the next book. Uh, to see if there was any improvement um, but as it stands I'm not interested in continuing yeah sadly not great uh, next on the list <laughs> I went through not one but two massive translated Japanese books uh, which one shall we do first mm. why not Chronicle is the one I finished first, I I was probably I'd been reading this through the month before, um, and just finished it off at the start of the month. So this was my second Murakami. If we're talking about fiction, uh, like I said before, I read Wild Sheep Chase, um, and I kind of read that in preparation for reading this, um, because I kind of got this the impression that this was kind of his magnum opus or at least one of i know it's one of the higher rated of his books by fans uh so i wanted to read a shorter murakami to kind of get a feel for his writing before i delved into this one uh, i'm quite glad i did because um after a couple books i now see that he definitely has a style of writing um how do i talk about the wind up book one So this was, I believe this was like originally two or three books. This seems to happen a lot with um, Japanese fiction when it's sort of brought over to the West, uh, where you can have a couple of books in one that are then put together. Uh, the Makioka Sisters was like that, uh, Breast and Eggs was like that. Um, so how do I describe the Wind of Bird Chronicle? Starts with a uh, a couple, and um, the wife tends to go out and work quite late. She's not in the house as much, and the husband has quit his job and is currently not doing anything. Um, which again was weird timing because, <laughs> uh, I'm going through a similar thing. I'm taking a break from full time work. Um the last six years have been a lot uh so it's quite funny to be reading about a character in a similar position um i don't get as many interesting visits on my door as this guy does though <laughs> uh but from there we have a strange phone call that he picks up from seemingly a woman who kind of wants phone sex or something similar from him but won't reveal her name but says that he knows her. Um, and then weirdly that mystery gets, even though it's sort of like the setup of the book gets put aside <laughs> for a while. <laughs> um, then we have, uh, he's got a missing cat and then he goes looking for the cat. The wife suggests that they call uh, the psychics to help them look for the cat. Um, and anything I describe is just going to sound weird because it's just a lot of small events 
that may or may not connect back to the main character. Well, I suppose everything connects back to the main character in either a vague way or a very real way. Oh, my thoughts drying up. So, as you can probably tell, the plot is quite tricky to describe. <laughs> um, but I did enjoy my time with it. I feel like... I feel like at the moment I kind of sit in the middle. I Weirdly, I always got the impression that people either really love Murakami or just don't get on with him. Um, I know for some people one of the reasons is the way that he writes women. Um, which, yeah, I, I totally get. Um, obviously, like when the the first the first characters you meet are his wife and a woman who wants to do phone sex, and then the third one is a bizarre sight. Yeah, there's a lot of women as sexual objects in it. Um, there's an, a character in this who fits that role especially. Um, you know, she has the ability to sort of go into people's heads, dreams, but when she's there she has sex with them uh, and yeah her whole background is tied up in prostitution um, and it's one of those things where uh, that element on its own is fine but I, I if every book has a woman who is sexy and has a lot of sex with the main character, then it kind of comes, okay, yeah, you just, just calm down, <laughs> calm me. Maybe save it for your horny fanfiction. <laughs> this is why people need fanfiction and, you know, erotic writing. Just save it for that. <laughs> oh God, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm losing the thread completely i'm sorry how did i feel about this then i i did enjoy it um it goes to a lot of weird places you can't quite predict it um it's an interesting journey and i really hate that it's i can only really talk about it in vague ways um because it's a strange book it's it's a guy walking in a sort of hazy dream world where, you know, he's... I think the fact that he's not working is very important um, because it means that he's entered this world where boundaries aren't quite the same, you're not stuck to a uh, routine except for the ones that you make for yourself. Um, you know, he's walking through this dream world and coming into contact with these interesting and weird characters we have like i mentioned the psychic and then we have um a man who ha comes into his life to pass something on from some because of someone's will uh, and then he just ends up telling a story about his life during i can't remember which war but it was something to do with Russia. Uh, so he ends up telling this story about how they took someone over a border um, and then they were caught in the act um, and someone was skinned alive. That scene was grim. Mm. <laughs> um, you have a another character who's kind of similar to the psychic uh, but she ends up buying him new clothes and then uh, hiring him for a very weird job that is definitely intended to be up to the reader's interpretation to a point. Um, you know, there's a lot of weird mental stuff and psychic stuff happening. Um, I liked the weirdness of it uh, and I, yeah, I enjoyed the journey through this odd world um would i do i want to carry on with any more economy i think so yeah i'm not 
in love with the style of writing but I'm definitely intrigued enough to look at more um, and for as weird as it was I think the larger size of it helped because I think just living in this odd world for so long um, and being pulled into it it was an experience um, and I, I think it was I think I enjoyed it more than Wild Sheep Chase for that reason um, I think that's about all I can say maybe when I'm more awake and the caffeine's hit <laughs> I could talk about it more clearly um, but hopefully people who've also read Murakami get why I'm struggling with this so much um, I think really it's a book that needs to be discussed as if you're in a book club, you know, where someone asks a random question and goes, what do you think the themes are? And then you can, <laughs> ah, well, because of this and this and that. <laughs> so I think it really needs like spoiler discussions with people who've also read it. Um, so maybe that's, uh, that's a new category I should create for books, you know, this deserves to be in a book club, which I thought the same about with um, Clara and the Sun. When I finished reading that, I thought this would make a great book for a book club um, because there's a little enough ambiguity in it where you can have a chat about what you think that meant. But something that was <laughs> definitely not ambiguous, Lady Jerko. Now, before I go into this discussion, I have to point out that despite not really being obvious from the book, this is volume one. <laughs> so, in fact, this really is the opposite of Wind Up Bird Chronicle, because rather than being three books in one, this is one book that's been split into two, and it's really annoying that it wasn't advertised that way. Um, I mean, I personally don't mind because I'm happy to get the second volume when it comes out and wait for it. But I can see some people being really annoyed about that. Um, and I think it's a little bit sneaky to not really make it that obvious. Lady Joker is a book that is inspired by the real life crimes committed by the group known as the monster with the 21 faces. I think I have that right. Yes. So we follow a group of men who only really know each other because they all go to the horse races. Uh, but they're a group who, they're not the top of society, they're regular men and in some cases men who are very down on their luck and over time they decide to stick it to the man <laughs> and go after a beer company to get money so i'd say the first half to two thirds goes into detail of all of these men's lives including the president of a beer company and then the last third covers the events from the point of view of the police and those involved at the beer company so we see the build-up to the crime and then we cut to the other people kind of experiencing it from the outside uh, which is really interesting um like i said this is volume one so i have no idea if there will be a time jump back to see it from the perpetrator's point of view or what will happen um, and also I'm not going to be able to review this really because <laughs> I've only read half the book um, I did enjoy the book however what's the right thing? Takamura Takamura really want you to understand these characters 
So for better or worse, we get a lot of detail about quite, I'm sorry to say, boring things. I think the best example is when we followed the um, president of the beer company. I, I think one of the first uh, chapters were with him. Uh, huge amounts of that chapter are simply dedicated to his thought process of managing the company down to uh, predicting sales, uh, marketing the thought process of whether to cut down on what types of beer to sell, whether to come out with new beers, uh, what his competitors are doing. Uh, and he's not the only character where this happens. Um, and I, I think the idea is to really get to grips with how these people think, the world that they live in. You know, we don't... She really... The writer, she really doesn't... I think she doesn't want people to just glance over and go, oh, that's their personality. They really want to know the world that they live in. Sometimes I liked it. Other times it felt like it dragged a bit and when it's quite a big chunky bug already, um, it felt like <laughs> it was time that maybe I would have had more fun. It's time that maybe I would have preferred spent seeing more exciting things. <laughs> like it, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of brilliant but I also think it's a bit of a shame because I think it will turn people off. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of sat in the middle with it. I swayed from going, oh, okay, I'm, yeah, I really understand what this character is like. I understand their job, I understand what they're going through. And then after a while, I'm like, okay, but this is making it really hard to read. So, this was like the complete opposite of Children of the Barn. <laughs> that book was the quick, easy read that I needed. Uh, this was the book that would sometimes make me feel sleepy. <laughs> I hate to admit. Um, yeah, I'd read a few pages sometimes and be like, oh, oh, no, pay attention. <laughs> um, there is also a lot of uh, character stuff that isn't the boring minutiae. Um, background on families. Uh, we get that especially with... Um, is that right to call him a main character? I'd say the original main character. Um, he's an older man um, who is sort of part of this family that bit by bit is becoming more and more interesting. So this man, his grandson, has just died at the start of the book. Um, it's unclear what kind of happened. Um, it was potentially suicide. Um, he crashed his car. And this happened very soon after a s strange interview with the beer company. Um, uh, they suspect he was maybe not given the job on because of discrimination. Oh my god, my throat is killing me. Okay, I don't think I can fully explain the family tree of the main character. Um, but there the becomes this sort of like real, really complex web of characters and events that sort of go back in history as well. Um, you know, the whole book starts with a letter that was written in the 40s by a man who ends up being the main character's sort of long lost brother. So there are all these connections, uh, but what's interesting is that by the time he decides to commit the crime, the connections and the history aren't as important as the fact that he is a man that has just become sick of being the underdog in this world and Companies like Hinode Beer 
just get to do it you know it really just comes down to a story about capitalism and the differences between those on top and those at the bottom uh you know inter- even though there is this history between him and the big company or between his family and the big company he even says that it doesn't really have to be them that he attacks he's just sort of wants to go for a big company he wants to go for the those types of people um because his grudge isn't specific it is about his grudge is against the higher classes <laughs> so if that intrigues you wait wait because it, like i said it's half a book um i think the next one comes out in august so i will probably move it to the top of my reading list when it comes out because i want to read the second half of this book <laughs> i want to know what happens <laughs> and i will have to leave it there i'm sorry if i was tired and my throat is dying on me apparently um but it's been nice to sit down and talk about some books again it's been a little while uh and i've got a vlog to carry on with um so i will see you for the next video thank you for watching bye